with more and more manufacturers producing turbocharged engines, a lot of people have just been asking me how to properly drive a turbo. There are some differences between a turbocharged engine and a naturally aspirated engine. The key thing really is the way the power is delivered. In this video, we're just going to look at some things that we should be doing at the start and end of our journey to maximize the lifespan and the reliability of our turbocharger. The turbocharger uses a series of turbines. It's driven by exhaust gases. And as the turbine on the exhaust side spools up, it spools up the turbine on the intake side, and that pulls lovely, fresh, compressed air into the engine. If the RPM is low, the turbocharger is not going to be producing enough boost. And this is a condition known as turbo lag. Not only does the turbine from the exhaust side spin more slowly because the exhaust gas flow is low, they're also made of metal. There's inertia. It takes a little while for them to pick up speed. This brings us into our first topic, really, the power band. Every car has got a very, very specific power band. This is really where the car delivers peak torque and peak HP. And the trick of driving a turbocharged car is to try and keep the RPM in that sweet little bracket. So when we change up a gear or down a gear, we need to be thinking about what the RPM is going to be when we hit that new gear and just make sure that we're still in the power. It's very, very easy on a turbocharged engine, particularly the smaller capacity modern turbocharged engines to get out of the power band and start to experience lag. If you've ever tried to pull away in the wrong gear, you get away with it in a naturally aspirated engine. But in a turbocharged engine, it will really struggle to pull the car. And that would be a condition known as lugging, which is not particularly good for the engine. In an actually aspirated engine, you can pretty much use the accelerator as a binary pedal on and off. And it didn't matter too much. You got a little bit of wheel spin. But with a turbocharger, thinking about the physics of how the turbocharger spools up and the delivery of the exhaust gases and the delivery of the power is much better for the lifespan of the engine and also for a smooth power delivery to graduate the throttle rather than just going full ball instantly, build it up, go from a third to two thirds to maximum throttle, but do that in a progressive way. So as the turbine spins up and produces more power, you can capture that power with a little more throttle. And that matches really the delivery of fuel to the air that's going into the engine. Obviously the ECU is going to do a lot of the work for you, but you're not gonna be backing off because you're demanding too much throttle input and there's not enough air going into the engine at that specific point. The next area that we really need to talk about is the start up and the cool down. Now things have come a long way. In days gone by when the engine was hot, there would be no oil circulating through the turbo when you shut it off. There'll also be no coolant. And turbochargers get pretty hot. They're working on the exhaust side of the engine. So there's a lot of temperature in there. And it's very easy for the oil that's stuck inside the turbo to exceed the manufacturer's specifications. And quite a few engines that I've worked on have had sludge problems due primarily to the fact that the turbocharger has cooked the oil and turned it into sludge. With a modern engine though, you often got electric water pumps. The oil and the coolant is circulated after you shut the engine off. You can hear these mechanisms whirring around. Often the fans are still going when you shut the engine off. But a little bit of mechanical sympathy does go a long way. And if we can just bear in mind that the engine needs a little bit of time to cool down after a spirited drive. Now, in most cases, that may just mean going a little slower for the last mile or so of our journey. When I say slower, I mean engine speed rather than the actual speed of the car. If we can keep the RPM down a little, it just allows everything to properly circulate and properly cool down. On startup, it's the reverse really. We need to allow time for everything in the engine to warm up. The metal components in the engine need to expand and fit the manufacturer's specifications for the tolerances. You get a lot more blow by. That's the gap between the piston and the wall of the cylinder. And that, generally speaking, closes up significantly when the engine is warm. Now, modern engines are built with tighter tolerances, so that is less of an issue now than it used to be. But the oil does require a little bit of heat to properly meet the viscosity requirements of lubricating the engine. And it takes a few seconds as well for the oil pressure to build up. Obviously, depending on how the engine has been designed, it will affect the length of time it takes to get up to oil pressure and to get up to temperature. Only when the engine is particularly warm should we be exploring the upper two thirds of the RPM range. This gives a chance for the oil inside the turbo to meet the viscosity and do its lubrication thing inside the turbo. And we need to bear in mind that those components in the turbo 
are spinning at very high speeds. Lubrication is very critically important. As soon as the turbo starts to fail, you'll notice it's not producing power smoothly. It's struggling to spool up. It may even be making whining or sirening noises. And they are signs that the turbocharger is failing. If you can think of anything that I've missed off on this video, please let me know in the comments. I love hearing your comments. And if you could just boot that like button, that really does help us to get out there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. That again helps the algorithm to pick up on us and recommend us to a few more people. And you won't miss out on the great content that we've got planned on this channel. Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.